Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Kia. I'm Aaron. And our channel is Building Wealth with Kia and Aaron. And in our channel, we talk all about building wealth through finance and real estate investing. And we have a very highly requested video today. Um, over the past month, our Instagrams have been going crazy, right Aaron? Yeah, they have. So we've gotten tremendous growth on our Instagram page both of our pages, and that's because we've been showing the progress of our real estate investments that's going on right now. Right now, we're currently working on a triplex as well as a quad. So one of the questions that we've been at so many times is how do you actually get the money to do this? So in today's video, we're gonna talk all about how to get financing for real estate investing. So there's different ways you can get financing on real estate investing. And in today's video, we're gonna cover two of those different ways. We're gonna talk about banks and we are gonna talk about private lenders. So your bank is actually a more traditional way of getting funding. Then you have a private lender, which is actually based on the deal. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is banks. So banks are, like Kia said, your more traditional way of getting funding. And what are some of the pros and cons to working with a bank? So one of the pros is, is that the bank is usually going to have a lower interest rate than any other way of getting funding for real estate. So, you know, you're going to be able to get the funds for cheaper than where you can get them, you know, anywhere else. Um, the banks also are based on relationships. So the, if you have a good relationship with the bank, you're usually going to be able to get them to do stuff that they wouldn't usually do for other customers. But in order to have a good relationship with the bank, you usually have to already have done some deals with them. So, you know, after you've done a couple of deals, they're willing to, you know, like make it a little bit easier to get other deals done. So, you know, that is definitely a pro because if you do have a good relationship and they're allowing you to do some things a little bit different, it helps make it so that you can do more deals. And then the third thing is that banks have, you know, usually have more funding available than some of those other, you know, institutions or other like a private lender. So, you know, you could do deals that are a lot bigger with banks than you would be able to do with other lenders because, you know, they may not have as much funding to be able to offer you. Uh, now, some of the cons to working with a bank. So one of the cons is that they're going to get in your business. They're going to get into your details. So they want all of the details. They want to see your W-2s. They want to see uh, your bank statements. You know, um, They also want to do uh, in-depth debt to income ratio on you. So they want to understand all of the income you have coming in, all of the debts you have coming in. They want to make sure that you can service the debt even if you know, you're not getting all of the, the rents that you're supposed to get. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to work with the bank in that aspect as well. And then the third thing that, you know, that makes the banks a con is that, and in my opinion is the biggest con, is that you usually have to put more money down. Um, they're usually asking for anywhere between 15 to 25% of the purchase price. And honestly, most people just don't have that money to be able to put down. So, you know, you're getting the lower interest rate because you're usually putting down a lot more money up front. And that's a bit common for most people because a lot of people just can't afford to put, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars down on a property to purchase it. So whether you're using a private lender or you're using a bank, you do have to have good credit. So they will pull your personal credit. However, it won't show up on your credit report. So I want to thank today's sponsor, ScoreMaster. ScoreMaster's users see an average of a 61 point increase on their credit score when they use ScoreMaster. So if you're struggling with your credit or if you're looking for ways to increase your credit, I definitely recommend you check them out. I will leave the link down below. And when you use the link, you can actually save um, using our link. Okay, so the second funding option that we're talking about in this video is private lenders or asset-based lenders, as Kia said earlier. So basically a private lender or asset-based lender, they basically lend to you based on the deal. If you have a good deal, they will give you the money for it because they know that it's gonna be profitable. 
Um, now there's pros and cons to working with them as well. Some of the pros are that you do not have to show any type of W-2 information. Um, another pro is that you don't have to do a debt to income analysis. So they do not need to see how much income you have coming in, how much debt you have. So it makes it a lot easier to be able to get the loan. The third thing that um, that's a pro for private lending is that they're, they're able to close extremely quickly. Like if, if Kia and I, if we find a deal today and we know that it's a great deal, but we need to close in 15 days, our private lender can usually close it as soon as like 10 days. So we can close, get the property, you know, uh, in our name, get the funds over to the seller within 10 days. That's not possible with the bank. You know, with the bank, it could take up to 60 days or even more. Longer, because remember, you need that documentation. Yeah, and they have to vet out all of that documentation. So this allows you to be able to, private lender allows you to be able to close extremely quickly. Now, some of the cons to working with a private lender. One of the biggest cons to working with a private lender is that the interest rates are higher. Now, a lot of people say that they are a lot higher. I don't necessarily agree that they're a lot higher, but they are higher than what it would be to work with a bank. So the funds are a little bit more expensive than what they would be working with your more traditional bank. The second con to working with a private lender is that they're always usually going to have some type of prepayment penalty. So if you have a loan with them and you want to pay it off early, they're usually going to have some type of prepayment penalty to paying it off early. Like um, if you owe them $100,000 and you don't want to pay it off at the maturity date, you want to pay it off early, there could be a 2% penalty to paying it off early. So you won't only be paying the $100,000 that you owe them, you'll also be paying an additional $2,000 for a penalty for paying it off early. They want to make sure that they get all of the interest that they can get out of you. So that's why they put that prepayment penalty on it. And I know you guys are wondering, how much money do I have to put down with a private lender? Well, with a private lender, you will have to put either 10% down of the purchase price or 10% down of the overall deal. Okay. And the third con is that if you're doing a deal with a private lender, it usually has to be a really profitable deal where there's a lot of equity in the deal because they, they vet the deal out. They wanna make sure that the deal is profitable. Like I said earlier, they lend based on the deal. So if it isn't profitable enough, if they feel like it's not gonna make enough money, they will not do the deal. So that's, that's a con because you could technically have a good deal out there where it's, it may not be as profitable as they want it to be and they will not lend on it because of that. Yes, as Aaron said that we do, use private lenders whenever we do our real estate investing and we actually have a, another video that thoroughly explains how we use a private lender and even how we refinance to get our interest rate lower so i'll also link that video down below so that you guys can check that video out so in closing i want to make sure everyone gets the message that we're trying to send out so in comparison for a bank versus a private lender which one's better to work with I don't think either is better to work with. They're both necessary. Um, I think that as a beginner, it's usually a little tougher to get loans from, from banks. And if you don't have the capital to put down, it's tougher to get loans from banks. I think that in that time, it's better to use you know your, your private lender to be able to maybe do some burrs and, and build up you know a portfolio and that you can go to the bank with and potentially refinance to, to more long-term lending. And that would allow you to, you know, take advantage of the lower interest rates, but without putting down so much money, right? So it's a combination of both. If you can buy and renovate with your private lender and then build up a portfolio and refinance with your uh, traditional banks, I think you can, you can cert use both of those uh, institutions or both of those methods to be able to take advantage of the funds that they want to lend out and, you know, be able to build a portfolio up.
So we'll leave some resources down below to some private lenders. And I want to thank you guys so much for all of the feedback that you provided on our Instagram page. You guys have definitely been showing out on both me and Aaron's Instagram pages. And if you guys found us on Instagram, let us know down in the comment section. Yeah, and like and subscribe and let us know what other type of videos you want to hear from us in the future. We're going to continue to put them out every other week or so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye. All right, peace.